living for Him today, folks. All right, praise the Lord. God bless you. He is the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me. This is what Jesus said. And there's many folks here that, that probably do have a walk with Christ and love Him. And friend, today I want to encourage you to draw near to God, to humble yourself before Him, draw near to Him as you never have before. Just press into God. Maybe it's been a while since you've really read the Word and really prayed and sought God. Maybe it's been a minute. Friend, today, today is the day not to put off your Bible reading and not to put off fellowship with other believers. Today is not the day for you to walk in, luke, in lukewarmness after the flesh. But today is the day right now to press in towards God, to get closer to Him. To deny the flesh. And Jesus said, if any man will follow me, let him take up his cross. That's right. Crucify himself, take up his cross and follow him. That's what Jesus said. We're supposed to deny ourselves, not indulge ourselves. We're supposed to take up that cross. What does that mean? That's kind of death to the world. Death to the things of the flesh. Death to the things that this flesh wants to do. You know, the, the older I get, the longer I've been, I've been saved for like 30 36 years, 37 years. And the, the longer I walk with the Lord, the more failure I see in my life, especially when it pertains to the flesh, to the things of the flesh, whether it's just not being kind to my spouse or not being kind to people. And, and you guys know what I'm talking about. That's flesh. And the Bible says that if you walk in the flesh, you shall die. That's in Romans chapter 6 and Romans chapter 8. But if you crucify your flesh, you will live. And I think we all stand here or sit here guilty before God as people that, are, that, have, that have walked in the flesh, that have failed God. And, and it's nothing but the sheer mercy of God that we stand righteous before Him. But folks, at the same time, we can stand before God and admit that, Lord, without Your mercy, without Your grace, I'd be in hell. I'd probably be dead right now, but it's God's mercy and His grace that we're here today. Oh, people, today, press into God. Seek Him like you've never saw Him before. Today's the day not to play around with God. Here's the thing is that many people think that they've got plenty of time to live and to get right with God eventually. My stepdad passed away last year and ended up losing his capacity, his mental capacity to reason and have rational thought. And to be able to repent at that point. Is he in heaven? Is he in hell? I, I don't know. I don't know. I know I know. I serve a God who is righteous. He's a just judge and he'll judge righteously. And I trust him. What about you, friend? The, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to make it right with God. Today is the day to confess your sin to Christ. Confess. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs that he that hides his sin will, will not have mercy. But if you confess him... And forsake them, God will have mercy on you. I think I quoted that out of order, but you get the idea. God will have mercy on you when you humble yourself. The scripture says in James that he he actually denies the proud, but he has he has uh, he actually will bless you and he'll save you if you're humble. He gives grace to the humble, but rejects the prideful. Today is the day to humble yourself before God, admit the sin that's in your life. I mean, he already knows. We're talking about God. We're talking about the one who created you, the one who gave you breath to breathe, the one who made your brain start to work. These are all... Hey, time out, time out. If this is blessing you or you're finding this entertaining of sorts, uh, please like, uh, like the video, share the video, make a comment, uh, make this a favorite of yours, whatever these youtube -y things are. Please do so. We would love to hear more from you, and we want to bring more of this to you. Uh, we are dependent on your feedback, so looking forward to it. Thank you. Now, Cat Williams said himself, he was on Joe Rogan podcast just a couple months ago, and he said this. This is Cat Williams speaking. The fact that there is a God, the fact that there is a God is the biggest conversation worldwide. But the truth of the matter is there is more reason for you to believe there is a God than there is for you to not. So Cat Williams, if you hear anything that Cat Williams had to say tonight, 
That is the most important. That he believes that there's more reason for you to believe in a God than not to believe in a God. Okay? So just remember that when you're in there and having a good time. Now, here's something that's really important to understand. That Paul, the Apostle Paul, knew this as well. He knew there was more reason to believe in God than not to believe in God. He says that everything we see, we like to look at these buildings and, and think that humans made them, and they, and they did with their hands, but that brain that was designed to handle this magnitude, that was all God. And this is the issue. I want to read this from Romans chapter 1. To Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppress, the, this is important, for people who suppress the truth in righteousness, because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. What is, it, what is he saying? He's saying that our, that our unrighteousness is manifested by the way that we suppress God's truth. Okay? And you, you might ask, well, why? Why? I've never heard of Jesus, or I, I believe what I believe. Why does this matter? And this is why it matters. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, that is, his internal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived, being understood by what has been made, so that they are without excuse. You hear that end of the sentence? Without excuse. What is he saying? What is, what is the Apostle Paul saying? He's saying that if you see the trees, and you see the mountains, and you see the skies, and you see the eclipse this week, you are without excuse to believe that there's not a God. You have to understand that this world is built in a way, and we have built it in a way, where it wants you to not think that God is real. It wants you to, it wants you to come up with an answer. Let me tell you something. I love science. Love science. Science can explain things and how they're done. It does not mean that God did not do those things. Just because you can explain something. I can explain how my child was developed in my wife's womb. But man... I'll tell you, I look at my daughter's eyes, and that is a gift of God. God made that. God made that from the start to the end. Even though I can explain how it's done, I still accept the fact that God designed it to be that way. Why? Because the scriptures tell me that he knew my daughter before she was in the womb. He knows every number of every hair on her head. She had value before she was ever even conceived. Her soul was with God in heaven, her spirit. Just because science can explain it doesn't mean that God didn't do it. And so we don't have an excuse when we look at the world and we look at nature and we see everything, the way it's built and the way things function, and we choose to ignore God. Paul says that we are without excuse because even if we've never heard the word Jesus Christ or the two words Jesus Christ, that does not mean that we can't believe in a God and that he won't come and reveal himself to us. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks but they became futile in their reasonings, and their senseless hearts were darkened. Have you ever noticed the farther away a civilization goes away from God, the darker it feels, the more lost it seems? Paul called that out 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, he said, this is how it goes. He says, you stop trusting in God. You start trusting in yourself. You start worshiping the creation rather than the creator. And next thing you know, you're worshiping yourselves. This is how it goes. We get rid of God. We start to worship the earth and, and idols and wooden images, sports teams, whatever. And then slowly, we more and more start to worship ourselves. And once we get to self-idol worship, we give into our most lustful and dark desires. And that's where you get the sexual morality of our day and the drug use of our day and the depravity of our day is through self-worship manifesting as we get farther and farther from the God of the truth. And here's, here's the point, my friends. Given all that, given all the self-worship, all the rejection of God, all the looking at his creation and trying to explain it the way through formulas and other things, God said, I still love them. I still made them. It says that while you were still a sinner, God died for you. Jesus died for you while you were still lost in sin. He says that the wicked are enemies of God. Would you die for your enemy? How many of y'all would die for someone y'all hate? For someone you don't like? For someone that did you wrong? God did. God did. 
He died for someone that did him wrong. He died for someone that was his enemy. Who? Us. Us. We were his enemies. If you don't know him, you are his enemy. People don't like that, but that doesn't mean he doesn't love you. It just means that that's where you're standing in front of God. If you go before God right now without any payment of sin, you deserve death. You will be given death. But God loved you even as an enemy, even as a, as a child of Satan, as an enemy to God. He died for you because he loves you, because he loves who you are. He created you uniquely with purpose. He created you with hope and passion. And if you would just come to him, listen to Cat Williams. You have more reason to believe in God than not to believe in God. So I encourage you today to believe in him. Today's the day to admit, God bless you. Today's the day to admit your sin, confess it, forsake it, and totally follow Christ with everything in your capacity. Today's that day, my friend. And it's, it's, He's a whisper away, God forgive me. Lord, have your way in my life. I'm sorry I haven't followed you as close as I should. Lord, take away the distractions in my life and help me, Lord, to be committed to following you my entire life. It's as simple as that. God honors that kind of humility and that kind of prayer. And my friend, I guarantee you, He'll change your life. The Scripture says to taste and see that the Lord is good. That's one aspect of God and His mercy and His grace. The other aspect, is, and this is what John the Baptist preached when he came, and Jesus, His first message He ever preached was repent and believe the Gospel. Repentance is having a change of mind that leads to a change of action. It's, it is a command that we are to do if we're going to follow Christ. We must.